Josh, do you want the mic? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Whilst um, Paul is getting his presentation ready, Josh can tell you a little bit about himself. Oh, it's really nice to be here. So thanks very much for uh, inviting me down. Um, okay, so um, started um, life in Surrey. Um, my parents um, invested in Inside Track. Um, anyone heard of those? Yeah. Do you invest with them? No. No. no? Okay. You're very lucky. Um, so um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that, um, about the experiences that I've been growing up with, kind of around property. Um, and hopefully, um, there we go, tell you about a few of the deals that I've done recently. That's okay. Slight technical issues, but we're working on them. Thanks. Okay, so um, I thought I'd run you through a couple of deals that I've done recently. Um, so there are kind of generally three ways that I work with people. The first is um, just literally lending my money on a fixed return. So um, this is um, an example of that. Uh, so a um, flat in Northampton, it was bought for 87500 um, It's already uh, agreed as a joint venture, and in April in the WPN, there'll actually be an article on this. Um, the Cur Curly Investment Limited um, are the guys that, that did it. Um, I actually put some money in and got a fixed return on this particular project. Um, so this is the inside. Um, fire escape down the back. We also um, had a garage um, kind of included in in the property as, as we were buying it. Um, now the the owner of the block who lived on the bottom floor wanted to purchase this but had fallen out with the owner and they wouldn't sell it. <laughs> and that's what it looks like now. Um, so go we back one, Josh. blocked up go blocked back up, a minute. Blocked up the doorway. So the, the camera is slightly moved. So this is simply I've put some money in and got a fixed return on this. It's already, it was already a, a joint venture, um, and like I said, being on the PN. So that's the other view of the kitchen, and kind of from the other side. Um, there you go. Not bad, is it? The fire escape we didn't need um, because um, fire rates, um, fire doors, etc., um, wasn't required. So okay. No problem. Yeah, well, there's five doors throughout. Um, <coughs> bathroom, lovely, isn't it? Not too bad now, though. So this is the hallway, massive hallway as you walk in, great big high ceilings, which is um, certainly a dual wow factor. Um, and talking to the estate agent when, when I eventually went to, to see the property, um, they were marketing it to 165, um, decided recently to drop it to 162. We've, they've had a full asking price offer. Um, so that was the idea of dropping it, full asking price offer, and now there's lots more people interested. So, you know, we'll see what happens there. That's how it looks now. Again, bedrooms. Could do a little bit more uh, furniture in it, but um, yeah, for some reason, someone thought it was a great idea to paint the, the walls red and the, the ceiling yellow. There's uh, no, no caffeine for taste. Um, and when um, when the guys came in to actually look at the property for the first time, there was problems with the roof, and uh, this was full of pigeons that got down the chimney and then obviously couldn't get out again. And there you go, transformation. 
Again, it's two bedroom flats, this is a second bedroom, and it looks like that. So 87,500 plus a little bit for legals, um, six week refurbishment, and that was uh, done over Christmas. Um, 12 grand was perhaps to be what I put in as a cash lend. Sourcing fee was 5,000. Uh, sorry, the sourcing fee was actually 3,000. The 5,000 was actually some works that they were put, committed to doing as a result of, of kind of buying it in the deal was you fix some of the roof, you did some of the stairways, um, because basically the um, the owner of the block hadn't done anything, and this was a way of putting that into the sale and getting some work done on their property. Um, so it was marketed for I think one six two five hundred, and we've got a philosophy price on that. Um, so that's just one example of uh, a cash lend. Uh, Chandler Avenue in Bristol um, was a joint venture. Um, in this case, we put all the funds in. Um, Susanna Cole, who spoke here, um, she actually managed the refurb for me. This is the kitchen. Um, there's a conservatory out the back, which was pretty dire. Um, and obviously there's a partition wall, which kind of was a utility-ish room out the back, which was kind of not a lot of use. So we took that out, took down the conservatory in the back, new door and window in, redid the kitchen. Um, literally cheap lino carpet, uh, lino flooring, um, and standard housing's kitchen. Very Susanna Cole. Very Susanna Cole. She wouldn't let me do anything else. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can tell it's her because there's a bottle of wine there. There is a bottle of wine, yeah. And they've got a dilemma at the moment. Their, their theory was they were going to put that in 40, 45-ish properties and drink it at the end of the year. But they had a situation where they had five properties and they were all being photographed. Then there's only one bottle of wine, so I'm not quite sure what they did there, so I'll update you for that. Um, again, the lounge. Actually, really simple stuff. The furniture goes in every house. Candles and cups, candles from some Tesco's. Um, blue bedroom. There's, there's not a massive amount to, to put in there, but actually gives a wow factor. Uh, pink again uh, in the other bathroom, uh, in the other bedroom. This bathroom, notice the toilet, the bath, and the sink. Notice they're still there. Looks better now, doesn't it? If I don't need to replace it, I won't. Again, breakfast in bed, of course. And that's just the outside of the front. So, um, one of the things that's really enjoyable about here, being here is when I first started coming here, bought my first property and that was about it. Um, I was really kind of not the brightest person at school. Um, so actually being able to stand here um, was one of my goals back when I first met David at a Tigering course. So um, there's a realisation of a dream today, so thanks for the invite. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so these are just the outline figures. Purchase 112, that was pre-auction. Um, that all of the road there has, um, it's a Cornwall construction, but it's basically concrete, whether the roof comes down, if you saw the roof comes down to the first level. Um, that needed a certificate in order to be mortgageable. So we were buying it at pre-auction, we had agreed 112. Um, the asking price of the auction, the guide price was 95. Um, the lady that was selling it just wanted certainty, that's all she wanted. Um, Okay, 112 was, was, I thought, fair enough. Um, she was happy. The council had lost the certificate. So there was a mad rush. 800 quid later, council are in. We've got our certificate and it's mortgageable. Oh, and then the next day they found the certificate. And that coincidence. Uh, fun and games. Um, oh, yeah, the other thing is it sold for 170 two days after it went on the market. Two days later, it fell out of bed. The, the bike pulled out for whatever reason. Uh, two days later, Sold again at 170, um, and then when it came to be um, revalued later on, they um, they actually undervalued it oh, at 150 or 155, which is very unusual. Um, our argument is that it was proven 170 as market value twice because we sold it twice. So the refurb was about six weeks. Um, as part of the deal, Susie um, managed the refurb. Um, so that was um, everything, electrics, heating, um, flooring, carpets, uh, and obviously all the paint stuff. Um, 
Now that took eight months to sell. But lucky enough, the people that I joined Ender with, I tell everyone a year is going to take, uh, every project is going to take a year. So I was going. Uh, the other thing is we had bridging finance on that. So it did cost me more, it took six grand or so on bridging finance. But, you know, um, it was 12 plus ish grand each between myself and Susanna. So you know, I had to pay five grand bridging, but hey ho, it, it made the deal happen. The Brambles, um, I did my first investor day at this, uh, this <coughs> middle of last year. Um, this was one that my parents actually sourced for me. Hey! Um, out of area estate agent, uh, were, I think we were up in London selling a uh, house in Colliford. Um, next door, which has been a little bit extended, the only difference is they had a bathroom onto the smallest bedroom. Um, that sold the last three times it sold for 400,000. Um, this one was purchased at 310. Um, the concrete gutters were a new one on me. They actually run in sections into the house and the roof is sitting on the other side of the gutter. So the seams run into the house and so is all the water. Um, so that was interesting. Um, firm, I think it was about 2,500 to cut the gutters off and put faces on uh, and, and gutter in. So um, I'm afraid I haven't got any nice after photos, but you can. You can get the general idea. The rubbish has all been thrown outside. The gravel we've put down. Um, the roof up there was leaking, as you can see. Um, it's been sealed around the top of the chimney, uh, the bottom of the chimney, sorry. So that was the inside of the lounge. The conservatory at the back, that is a grapevine throwing, growing through the conservatory. Um, great big uh, hole in the wall, which is, uh, thankfully, is now gone. Um, there it is now. So, minimal furniture, but it gave you know, the red all the way through. So this conservatory, I didn't cut the ivy before I took the photo, so you'll have to forgive me. <laughs> uh, again, cheap 599 square metre liner. Um, kitchen is, uh, yeah, not a lot to say about that really. It's, um, I don't know, 70s maybe? 70s-ish kitchen. Um, it's better now, isn't it? I haven't done the carpeters, I haven't changed the worktops, um, just a couple of doors. Because, to be honest, a big kitchen like that, people are going to rip it out. I don't want to put a £10,000 kitchen in the seat and skip the next week. Not going to happen. Um, again, just some interior photos laid out there. Of course, everyone needs like that, don't they? I did sell the property, I don't mind. I actually managed the individual trades on, um, on this particular project. and. Um, there are a few little things like here, if you can see that, which meant to come off the wall before it was painted, but managing it for the first time, I didn't know what I was doing. I missed that. So, all right, cover up, take it off later. Um, again, there's, a, there's some lights on the wall, which we were replacing, but of course I didn't think to take them off, we were replacing new ones, but the, the outlines are still visible, so it's a bit of touching up. But the cupboards were hor horrible 70s, just paint them. I did a world, I'd take them out um, because I'm selling space. Um, however, there are a lot of pipes <laughs> behind that cupboard, so they just stayed there. Guess who went to Ikea and didn't pick up all the boxes? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the bathroom. It's actually bigger than it looks because there's a old kind of worktop and a mirror. Um, and. Um, just a bit of rubbish for coffee there, yeah, sorry about that. But it gives you the idea. Um, we've moved the kitchen door, uh, kitchen door, the bathroom door, over. Um, there was a boiler and a boiler cupboard and everything, so that all got ripped out, retiled. Purchase 310, refurbishment about 25, um, on the market 395 currently. Um, it was actually bought in 2012. Uh, it was bought cash, cash investor. We put it in and I said, you know, the market might go up, it might not, what do you want to do? They were happy to sit on it to see if six, eight months later we could sell it and make a profit without actually doing anything. As you know, the market didn't. Um, did the work, end of last year. Um, it's just gone on the market for 395. I had five viewings this week, so fingers crossed. Hey, how to find property. I generally kind of do a lot of networking. I did uh, 17 events in January. Um, 
and I collect 10 business cards and I talk to 170 people. Um, so I get roped into doing a lot of stuff. This is Tony Law. You recognise it as Exeter High Street. Uh, I think I bumped into a few of you there. Shameful. But um, if we want to do property, I'm in it, or I'm, you know, I'm in it to win it. Um, I think we gave out three or four thousand leaflets over the time that we were doing it. Um, we yet to get a deal from that, but the idea was there. Um, I'm a bit worried because it, it, you can tell you've got clothes on. This was <laughs> this was a discussion online. Um, the people were more interested on whether or not Tony had anything on them doing it. Doesn't look as though he has, I'm sure he has. I've, <laughs> I've chosen the better photo, you can see him in the t-shirt, but the last one, there is literally legs and arms and nothing else. So it, was a, it was an interesting discussion online. Um, when, when we're doing this, and now the branding kind of stuff, um, visibility is credibility. So one of the things I'm doing at the moment is pushing my branding, because if people know and talk about you, you you might have to do anything particularly, but you become credible because people are talking about you. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about is how to find deals. It's a Susanna Cole model. Um, and this kind of stuff is great, uh, and Tony was dealing with all the, kind of all the conversations with people. Um, I'm quite a sensitive guy. Um, so uh, off the back of this, I had a, a potential lease option in, uh, in Exeter. A lady um, was about to be repossessed, her son was into drugs, her husband had moved to Thailand. Um, and I sat in there like, this is really depressing, but this is not fun. So the other thing is I actually think that lease options at some point are going to be either outlawed or you're gonna have a win, no win, no fee situation on on, on them. Um, I just think that it's, it's asking for trouble. Have you seen the, the TV program recently that is have you lost money on growth bonds? Has your bank lost you money? We've got this customer, 21,000. I'm thinking if you're doing lease options, just be wary, I could be wrong, but that's just my personal opinion on lease options. Um, so, I'm, I'm a word of warning then. So, working the room, that's really key to A, finding deals, and B, finding investors. Um, I forget where, where we are, I do so many of them. Um, but, my advice to anyone is talk to 10 people, collect 10 business cards and make 10 phone calls. That's actually what makes my business happen. For sourcing the deals, I'll hit the phone, I'll hit 20, 30 estate agents, and I'll just keep calling and keep calling and keep calling every week, and I'll have a sheet that has the A1 market value, which is what it's worth after refurb, how much they think needs doing to the property, you know, heating, electrics, I mean, you get a good idea after you've done it a few times, but you can put in a rough refurb cost. Then I want to subtract how much money I want to make on the deal, and that gives me my ideal buy price. So I can then compare that to the asking price and see whether it's worth going. If it looks like it might happen, go and get it there and then, because if not, someone else will have it. I just do that time and time again. So that's a basic formula. Then you make enough phone calls, you'll get enough deals. Again, with, with the, um, the, the phone calls, it's about keeping up the contact every month. Every six weeks approximately, if I met someone, I'll give them a phone call, say, hi, how are you doing? I'll explain the three ways that I work with people, which is the money lend, the um, joint venture, I put the money and they do the work, or the third one, the other way around. Um, they pay for the, um, so there's lend, joint venture, where they have the property and I do the work. I have the property and they do the work. Basically, if I get keep the property in my name, I can refinance them out of the deal and I get to keep the property, which in the ideal world is what I want to do because I want to build up the port uh, portfolio. Has anyone bought a property on credit card? Yeah. Oh, great, okay. So one of the things that Kevin Green teaches is very interesting. If you have two credit cards, both say a thousand in it, and you want to increase those, all right, by all means phone them up and go, oh, I want to increase my limit. And they'll, they go, yes. But a lot of the time with me, they go, no. Oh, that's fine, I'll make you do it anyway. So I'll phone up the first credit card, and I'll go, I've got um, some money coming to you. I'm going to um, purchase some materials for my property, which I'm going to sell at a profit. That ticks all their boxes. 
So then I'll phone the other credit card and I'll, I'll say, hi, I'm purchasing some property and um, some materials for a property and I'm going to sell it a profit. I need to transfer the available balance onto my other credit card. So they can authorise that. That goes straight onto the other credit card. So now I've got £1,000 available credit and the other £1,000 available credit from the other card. So I've now got a balance of 2000 available on that card. I'll then phone the other bank. I'm buying some uh, materials for a property that I'm going to sell at a profit. I need to transfer you some money. Okay, yeah, no problem at all. For any other credit card, I'd like to transfer that money. I'm going to buy some materials for a property that I'm going to sell at a profit. And I've sent the £2,000 back to the first credit card. Give it a few days. Then to transfer the £1,000 back, so you've gone 2000 onto this one, 2000 onto that one, back to 1000 on each available, zero. That transaction simply shows up on the system as you've used masses of credit, you've put overpaid, and now you're back to zero. That will trigger a phone call. Would you like to up your limit? How about we double it? Yes, please. Don't do it more than two or three times a month, but you can really get some big credit card limits by doing that. So, so definitely worth trying it out. So my last thing is, you've seen what I do, how I work with us, and a few of the little tricks and stuff that we use. Um, I work with 10 investors throughout the year because I want to do 10 projects. Everyone I work with, work with will get an opportunity to um, do a JV of some type. Um, I charge £100 commitment fee at the beginning of the year. That's your kind of, I'm in. It's, it's, um, it's not about the money, it's about that I'm actually investing in you and I'm happy to go ahead with the deals. So there are a few spaces left for people if you're interested um, and there are some forwards yeah. in the back. Um, yeah. One other thing that I, yeah, I haven't put on here. Um, I was talking to Barry earlier, who's coming up in a second. He was talking about builders. Now, this is quite a difficult thing to manage because I find that, um, from my own experience and others' experience, that a builder will do first project fine, second project fine. By the time we got to the third one, they can see how much you're buying them for, they know how much they're charging, and they can see how much you sell them for. So what do they do? They start edging up the prices. Or they start getting here at 10 o'clock and going home at 2, try and do these kind of funny things, uh, and then you have to find yourself a new set of builders. So one of the things that I definitely recommend is you, if you've got a really good tradesman, they will have their own team. So if you've got a good electrician, say, can you recommend anyone that's good at plastering? Can you recommend a carpet fitter? And they'll actually have their own team. So people, you don't have to use a massive set of builders. Definitely go with recommendations, um, which you can sign up for. It's free for a month. You can cancel after a month, and they'll give you all sorts of builders that are recommended in your area. I wouldn't cancel after a month. Yeah, get all the builders. Just another way of getting builders. Um, I always take pictures of vans, and I'll get them to come approximately three times to quote on projects. And if they're a good builder, they won't get fed up with you. The third time they come to visit and they don't get the work, generally the, the builders get pissed off. The ones that don't are the people that have got the patience to work with you. <laughs> so that's just a, a tip as a result of the conversation tonight. That's me, that's my phone number. I hope it's been kind of inf informative for you and uh, appreciate your time. Josh, can we just give him another round of applause? I know he was very nervous. Uh, the presentation. Um, now, the, our next speaker, we were we were going to have a short break here because there was a, another technical issue, but I believe that's been sorted out. So, keep our fingers crossed, yeah. Now, this gentleman is Barry, and when our, our Barry came into the room, he said, you haven't written me a label. And we said, yes, we have, it's been stolen. So uh, you better watch this man, is he really like this? Um, so Barry Davis 